What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to the Value TV show where we give you tools to build and have healthy relationships. That's right, tools to build and have healthy relationships. I am Jamel Jackson, your relationship mechanic. Today we are going a little deeper. Today we're gonna to be talking about a topic called infidelity. We're gonna be dealing with some betrayal. We're gonna be giving you solutions to overcome these challenges, but I couldn't do this without two of the most amazing people that I know, the couple that specialize in this particular field, Hassani and Danielle Pettiford. What's going on, guys? How are you, man? How are you? I'm doing amazing, man. Good. Um, so you guys specialize in this field, but before we even get into that, could you guys lay out briefly what do you guys do, Hassani, starting with you? So my wife and I are co-founders of Couples Academy, and um, it's a private practice where we really focus on infidelity recovery and divorce prevention. So 95% of the clients who come to us are couples in crisis, those on the verge of divorce or those impacted by an affair who are trying to figure out how to navigate through that. And so we have a phenomenal team of experts that really go deep dive in a comprehensive way to bring about personal transformation and marital restoration. And Danielle, you bring your uh, specialty to the crew. Absolutely. Um, well, I specialize in personality typology using Enneagram. Um, it is a powerful catalyst for change. It is one of the things that actually the couple say was the biggest transformation nugget that we gave them to help them improve their relationships with people, with their spouses, with their children, everything. Now, before couples come to you, this is the process first, right? It's not the first process. The first process is just evaluating where they are. You know, what are the problems? But it is one of the major steps in our recovery process. The first step is the affair recovery. You have to think about it. If you had an emergency, you're gonna to go to what? You're gonna to go to the ER, the emergency room, to address the immediate situation. Once that immediate situation has been properly addressed, then we can prepare to do more necessary operations long term. So when people are in crisis, they need to address the elephant in, in the room, and that is the betrayal. Now, the reality is, when an affair happens, it either exposes what's going on inside of a person or what's going on inside of the relationship. So that's when Danielle comes in as almost like a step two because it's a deep dive evaluation of what was wrong in the first place that led to the crisis. Mm -hmm. So they're both necessary. Now, when you said the elephant in the room, we were talking about this the other day, how do you get people past the process, how do you get them past that avoiding that elephant in the room? Because we, know, we may know it's there and we may, we may know we gotta have this difficult conversation, but I'm avoiding the elephant in the room. Well, the fact is you can't move forward unless you take a step back you can't go into your future until you dig into your past. Like, wherever you're trying to go, you have to go in the opposite direction to get there. Like, like, think about a rubber band. How do you get a rubber band to fly? You've gotta pull it back, and then there's a quantum leap forward. So there's no way that you can avoid the issue because it's step one. Like, we take couples through a comprehensive, what we call full disclosure, where we unpack every single detail of the affair, the facts of the affair, and the feelings associated with the affair. Because if we ignore it, like the typical practitioner, therapist, counselor does, it's almost like you're just going through the motions because they can't get out of what brought them there in the first place. And so many well-intentioned professionals don't know how to address nor resolve that major, major, major issue. And so that's why most people quit in the process because they're like, this is not working. We're not getting out of this what we need. And so we come from a completely different approach where we hit it head on because that's the only way to really resolve it. Absolutely, and, and I think it's worth saying that you know our approach is completely different. Um, we do employ counselors and um, people who are licensed, but we are coaches. And so we have a different approach. We're able to advise and really walk by their side and give them the details that they need to actually become actionable. Um, and that sets us apart because these people come through the door and they are in crisis. It's an emergency, right? We're, we're rolling them into the triage. We're stopping the bleeding. Once we stop the bleeding, now that's when the elephant in the room comes into play because now they're aware, okay, there's a big problem here. And we hold their hands through that process. So we're not typical. We actually have a holistic approach. But when people hear infidelity, Hassani, automatically sometimes they think sexual mm. pain. 
Why is that? Like, I, I believe there's levels to this. That's very true. Like, in essence, there's different types of betrayals, right? So people oftentimes, the reason why they struggle to move forward is because they're fighting back and forth as to what it was. It wasn't, it wasn't an affair. It was just cheating, right? We're using the same, different words to describe the same thing. Ultimately, it's a betrayal. And there are three components that make an affair an affair or a betrayal a betrayal. Number one secrecy so whether we're talking about financial infidelity emotional infidelity sexual infidelity secrecy is a main part of it because you don't want your spouse to know what it is you're doing number two emotional involvement this is important because a lot of people say well i didn't love her i didn't love him there was nothing emotional there well no 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 there are emotions because you bring your emotions into every experience that you have you eat ice cream this it's an emotional experience you go to work it's an emotional experience so either the emotion is wow there's something that i really like about you or i like how i feel within myself when i'm with you so you pull out an emotion that i currently may not be experiencing in my primary relationship and then number three, sexual energy. And the reason why we say sexual energy, because to your point, not all affairs involve sexual intercourse, but there's a sexual energy. There's, there's, there's this back and forth sexual banter where we talk about what we would do if we could do, but we can't do. So we just rely on this flirtatious, suggestive type of dialogue that oftentimes does lead into a sexual affair, but does, it doesn't necessarily have to. So those three components make a betrayal of a trail. Mm. The emotional aspect I guess you could answer this. What gets a, what do you believe gets a person to that? There are uh, a cumulative amount of things, right? Because of the way our personalities are shaped. So by the time we're seven years old, we already know how we're gonna be in the world, right? Depending on your personality style, you had some kind of early detachment from the nurturer. It could have been your father, it could have been your mother, right? We don't even understand the levels of trauma we're walking around here with. So those emotional things happen when we were a child. It's called developmental lag. So in our relationship, we have all these issues and all this trauma and all this conflict going on. And we don't realize that when the conflict happens or when the anxiety happens, we go back to that age. So now I'm 12 arguing with you. My 12 year old emotions are arguing with, me, with you. And that's really what's happening. It's not necessarily what's happening that we're fighting about, right? There's the internal and external, right? So I'm fighting with you about an external thing that happened. You lied to me. But there's also the internal conflict that's happening, and that's how I feel about how you lied to me. Mm -hmm. And that's oftentimes what we're arguing about. That's where it comes from. And, and, and coupled with that, because that's true, that's that deeper dive that most people aren't aware of. But coupled with that is the fact that we oftentimes transition in these relationships. We start off as soulmates, then over time we become role mates, and then soon enough, without any connection, we just become roommates. And if things get progressively worse, we feel like we're cellmates trapped in a marital prison. So there's an emotional disconnect which leaves a gap. And when that gap exists, it's so easy for us to now reach out to, intentionally, or accidentally, quote unquote, stumble into inappropriate relationships where we're getting needs met that should have been reserved for those that we're in a covenant relationship with. Mm -hmm. When you said reach out to, I thought about, because we're in a technical era now with social media and many media platforms, are you guys experiencing couples that are coming in that are dealing with digital infidelity? Oh, yes. brother, <laughs> are you, what? There's been, a, there's been an evolution of infidelity. There was a time where it was very transactional, where there was a major separation of men and women. So we had to cross a boundary or a line to go over into a space where there wasn't this connection. But be, be, there's two milestones that have shifted how infidelity happens. Number one, women entering into the workforce. So now men and women are in close proximity all day long. We work together, we're in ministry together, we have access to the same services, the gyms, memberships together. So, so number one, relationships are formed. Number two, social media, technology. Now, because of a finger, just pressing a couple of buttons, I have immediate access to people who maybe I've dated in my past, 
previous partners or people who I'm in interested in meeting for the first time. So oftentimes these relationships start online and over time they transition to offline and that's when they become full on emotional or physical affairs that are major, major devastations to a relationship. Yeah. Online, offline, and now you're out of mm. line. Now all out of line. I'm gonna steal that <laughs> and not give you credit. That. All out of line. I'm gonna steal that, that's okay. You know, it, it made me think when I was in school, and I, and I think we talked about this before, um, I was studying computer science and we had a class called disaster recovery. And what we would do is we would put together these uh, kind of like mock trial plans for companies and we would present them to them in case a disaster occurred, whether it was a flood, a fire, a tornado, any type of natural disaster. And some of the companies will reject the plan. And the plan may be from where, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 dollars, but they were rejected. And so what would happen is a natural disaster would occur, a fire or a flood, and it would destroy all the data. And now they would have to pay millions of dollars to recover the data. And when I thought about it, I thought about even relationships. So they call it a, a, a business continuity plan. And so I think couples should have a relationship continuity plan. Because most, most of us it. don't want to install the sprinklers until the fire starts. Correct. So and true. it ends up costing you so much, much more. more on the back end. Yeah. Now, now, you know what? That is brilliant. Because most couples, they would say, I can't afford what they're talking about. So we should just stay in this situation. Or we'll try to battle it ourselves. Um, what, what do you say to that? Do you, have you guys had that type of, of argumentative approach? Of course, you can't DIY yourself through your recovery process. And it, it makes me kind of think of a plane, right? When you get on a plane and that plane lifts off the ground, no matter where it's going, 90% of its journey is off course. And the only way that it gets to its final destination is that there's a radar system, a navigation system in the cockpit constantly guiding that plane. So there are thousands of course corrections being made along the way. If it did not have it, even with the best of intentions of the pilot, that plane would wind up in Timbuktu somewhere. And so oftentimes from a relational perspective, it's the same thing. You may have the best of intentions, but as they say, the road to hell has been paved with good intentions. And in your efforts to restore your relationship, 90% of your journey is gonna be off course. So you need a coach, a guide, a therapist, somebody who's taken this journey several times. And to your point, there's a cost associated with it. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people aren't willing to invest in their relationship or in their marriage. They'll spend thousands of dollars on clothes, cars, vacations, vacations holidays, all types of things, but don't see the value in their relationship. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the work? What were you going to I was going to say, I just think people overlook the need for personal transformation. Right, we're doing all these things. We're date. We're looking for dates online, going to social media, stepping out around the corner, hiding cell phone texts, all these things, and they don't understand that they are the problem. We always say that the key to your marital restoration is your personal re is your personal transformation. So that means that you got to get busy working on yourself, and people overlook it because they think that they can they can. Um, cover those anxieties and issues and needs by going and shopping and going on vacations and things. The key is personal transformation and that's what they miss. So that's that continuity plan that you're talking about. I love how you explain that because it makes me think about our logo, which is a shield, right? So we want to shield your marriage, but how do you do that? By implementing a plan. Where do you get the plan? From people who understand, who have gone the way and know the way who can hold your hand through the process. And people overlook the need for that. And there's a cost associated. And there's a cost associated. Right, right. right. So you working with, women, working with women, what's one of the most difficult challenges you face unpacking and digging into that personality assessment? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. It's the biggest challenge. People are holding on to years, decades of resentment. Um, bitterness and actually unforgiveness turns into resentment which solidifies into bitterness and bitterness is essentially a perspective now I see life this way because I'm bitter everything I look at through the bitter lens and so it really uh, deconstructing that and helping people go before the unforgiveness what happened and who were you and unearthing all those things really is the key to their transformation but the biggest hurdle is getting people to just let go Wow, yeah. wow, wow. So we're going to the root. We're going to the bitter root. Could, could I dare to say, is, is there a spiritual infidelity? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. How many people do you, there's two kinds, actually. You can, I know you'll speak a little bit to it, but 
I mean, there's a spiritual infidelity where you cross the lines of your own morals. A lot of times people don't understand their values anymore. They've gone so far off the deep end that they have to be reminded what actually matters to them. What are your values? What did you learn not to do? There's a scripture that I love that says that if you tra train a, a child up in the way that they should go, when they are old, they won't depart from it. Those were your values, right? So you crossed on those to do whatever it is that you want to do. Then you have people that literally in the midst of a relationship sh uh, switch religions in the midst of a relationship. And so now you have betrayed your spouse in that way because if I walked down the aisle with you and we were both Christians and now you decide I'm no longer gonna be a Christian, I'm gonna be a Buddhist, that is a, a form of infidelity as well. Mm. I'm glad you mentioned that because of course people have different religions and different perspectives and who, what God they serve. Do you find that being, since we're in that vein, do you find that Hassani being something that causes infidelity? Mm. Does it cause infidelity? Like, you know, like, you know we started out, whether, whatever religion we started out as, you know, let's go down this lane because people are thinking this. You know, what, whatever we started out with, maybe I started out believing in God and we were both believing in God, whatever that God that was, and now it's like, you know what, maybe media got a hold of my mind or whatever got a hold of my mind, and now I don't want to any, do anything with the disciplinary acts of how you're serving God, whether it's the man or the woman. Is that leading to infidelity? I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's a contributing factor. In essence, we're talking about an identity crisis. When we talk about people who of a certain age experience the midlife crisis, it's an identity crisis where they're faced with who am I and what do I even believe and what do I even value? And in that space, they wind up ser searching for who they are. And in that process, they'll reach out to external things to seek some type of validation or some type of fulfillment. So yeah, it happens all the time. I think at the end of the day, we have to realize that there are three relationships that we all have. Number one is the relationship we have with God, that's our vertical relationship. Number two, the relationship we have with ourselves, that's our internal relationship. And third, the relationship we have with our spouses, that's our horizontal relationship. We've placed such a focus on these horizontal relationships that we haven't taken the time to properly manage and develop the internal or the vertical one. So if there's no foundation here, then this is not gonna work out. And to your point, in terms of a spiritual infidelity, we have been unfaithful to God, to our creator. We have been unfaithful to ourselves. So if I don't have an allegiance to God, and I can't even honor my own promises and commitments to myself, how in the world am I gonna honor a commitment to someone else when I betrayed myself and my father 10 times out of 10? Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Okay, let's, let's reverse engineer this. How does, okay, I'm at this point, that, uh, not me, I'm just speaking hypothetically. The infidelity has occurred. <laughs> how am I getting back? What's one of the steps? Well, the what first is, step right. is to seek help. Right. The Reach first out. step is to find somebody who's qualified to guide you through a process. Daniel, you can weigh in. But here's the deal. If my car is broke or something's wrong, I have two options. I can go to the garage down the street because I think they fix all types of cars. And so they'll take a quick look at it, listen and look under the hood and say, yeah, I think it's the carburetor. It's going to cost you this much. Do you want to move forward? Mm, let me get a second opinion. Then I go to the legitimate shop on the other side of town, and they say, okay, what's wrong with your car? Uh, something's under the hood, I don't know what it is. And they hook it up to a machine. They do a deep dive diagnostic report. It's a 20 page printout that tells you all of the challenges with the car, and then you realize, oh my God, what I'm experiencing here is a result of something that happened here. So you have all of this detail, all of this information, who would you choose? Mm -hmm. You would choose the person who has the diagnostic report. The problem is we're seeking the right advice from the wrong people. We're seeking healing and restoration from people who are not qualified. And this is why we say you need to find somebody who is an expert in the specific issue that you are dealing with. Do you know that most people who do marriage counseling have no experience with marriage counseling? They're health clinicians, they're mental practitioners, they're social psychologists, workers. social workers, psych psychiatric, you know, all of these things, but those who have been trained 
uh, and, ex and they have an expertise in affair recovery. And that's why we want people to know we're not just marriage coaches and counselors, we're infidelity recovery specialists, and you're gonna get something uniquely different through our process than you will get from the typical counselor. Right, and I would just add early intervention is important because people just wait too long, right? It's so much easier to train you up correctly in restoration than it is to you know, break down the constructs that you've developed because people are doing it their way. Right, so they'll listen to our show, which is great. We, we encourage you to do that. They'll hear us say something and then they'll go do it on their own, right? Something like they'll split up and they'll try to do their own individual recovery or they'll allow certain things. It's a lot easier if you come early so that we can guide you through the process of recovery easier. I always say we like the idea of the relationship, but we don't like the commitment, work, and responsibility that comes with it. Oh no. We all want the grand marriage, we want the grand amazing relationship, but as soon as it's time to do some work and some That's responsibility, yeah. we're heading for the yeah. hill. I think people are running from it because they're afraid. Um, when people come to Couples Academy, they never leave. We have communities. I mean, it's a family, wouldn't you say? People, literally, they bond, they connect, and it's, it's odd. We never thought it would be this way because how do you connect people who were unfaithful? It seems like an oxymoron, keep them apart. No, because they go through a process of recovery. They become what they were supposed to be. They no longer have inappropriate relationships. And so they connect and they bond, they make friendships, they start traveling together, and they have an appropriate relationship with other people. So uh, they're afraid because they think it's heavy lifting and it's always gonna be heavy lifting. When you start, it might be hard, but once you get going, it's easier and easier and easier. You enjoy the recovery, you enjoy the personal transformation there's just a complete 360 degree turnaround in the lives of people that get started in well I commend you guys for what you do because a lot of times when people are going through a situation like that some people would castigate them or say you know what you're done correct correct let me put you over That's in that corner you've been divorced you've been damaged you've done this you're bad here's the judgment on you go over there mm -hmm. matter of fact sit in the corner mm -hmm. but here's the question Hassani what about the person that's like, okay, this has been done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I'm just done, you know? Yeah, I yeah. went to the class, I went to this, <laughs> and I just can't see her or him. I can't see them the same. Well, I think that's the knee-jerk reaction that most of us have, right? So once we discover an affair has occurred, they're done, right? Um, and so what we oftentimes say is, listen, before you make that decision, or more often than not, you have people who are vacillating back and forth. Should I stay? Should I go? We said that the best decision that you can make is to make no decision at all. Because any decision you do make while you're in your feelings is a decision that you're going to regret. If you decide to leave while you're in your feelings, you're going to regret it and want to stay. You decide to stay in your feelings, you're going to regret it and want to leave. So we say, listen, rather than you deciding, let us take you through this journey so that we can help you make the decision that is best because how you feel now may be different than how you feel once we get to the end of this. And so oftentimes there's a shift and a transition. People come to our last chance weekends completely distraught, only doing it because my spouse wants me, but they already have their plan. Once they get home, they already know where they wanna move, they got their backs virtually packed in their mind, they've got the whole plan. And then something shifts and changes in that experience that gives them a glimmer of hope. So they come from a place of desperation and leave with inspiration. They come feeling hopeless and helpless and leave with a plan that they're ready to execute to have a marriage that they've never had. In the last 10 years of working with couples, we've experienced six divorces in 10 years. That speaks to the comprehensive approach that we take. And it really speaks to the fact that deep, 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 deep down inside, a lot of people rather work it out and overcome their struggle than have to start from scratch and, and start life anew. So even if it's 1% of you, like what percentage of you wants to say only 1%, per, I'll, only 1%, well, I'm speaking to that 1% now. Because mm -hmm. that 1% can grow to 10, can grow to 20, can grow to 50, and before you leave, now you're at 100% fully on board to experience a life that you've never had. Wow, that's, that's, that's that's phenomenal, man. Listen, Danielle, for the woman that's watching yeah, right now and listening, and she's in this position, she's probably at her wits, she's had it up to whatever, and she's calling it a quits, I'm done, I've watched videos, listened to sermons, read books, I'm quitting, I hear what they're saying on this show, what are you gonna say? Yeah. 
Well, to the single woman, to the married woman, to the woman in waiting, to the girlfriend, I don't care what status you have, if you are struggling, if you feel buried by the trauma of your life, by the trauma of relationship, reach out. There's a place for you. And there are some gems and there are some golden nuggets. There are some seeds buried within you that if you only knew what you were capable of, if you're tired of doing life alone, if you want a sisterhood that is connected and bonded, reach out, we have a place for you. Asani, address those men, same position. One of the things that we say is this, every man needs a man, Come on. right? So we have all grown up in our household. Some of us have had a poor example, no example, or a great example. But the point is, our definition, our interpretation, our experience into manhood is uniquely different. And oftentimes there's a deficit that we have within us. So now we're in this marriage family situation and there's responsibilities and expectations of us, but how could I be a good husband or a good father if I don't even know what being a good man is? Mm. And I think so many men are in search of significance. They're trying to find out who they really are. And we create a pathway of self-discovery into manhood so that you can become who God has created you to be and then you can serve others the way that God has intended you to do. So if that's you, reach out to us. We would love to work with you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Value TV show where we give you tools to build and have healthy relationships. If you're single, dating, married, and you're looking for tools to build and have a healthy relationship, check out the Value TV show. I'm Jamel Jackson, your relationship mechanic. My beautiful guests, Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, just broke it down and played out some tools. See you guys later. Peace.